Ron, Ron is hooked up on these silver and blue Rapala guys. No, you can talk. And we, we were going, we weren't going super fast. We were going two and a half probably when that fish hit. And he's been in the rod pretty good, but that's a soft rod. Hopefully we land him. They're small hooks. I don't know what you think. Go over that one. You want to get that rod out of your way, Ron? No, no, I got it. <laughs> wow. Nice fish, bro. Nice fish. Yeah. Hey, Kevin, you want to see how the net is fish? Hey, it looks like that. What do you think? That, that is like Look at it. Nice. Wow. That's a beautiful fish. That's a good fish. It already came off the hook. That's even better. Watch that Rapala. That thing will hook you. Rapala, guys, right there. First fish of the day. He's going home. It's a bloodbath. Yeah. Ron's hooked up, guys. White woolly booger. Maybe two feet deep, 175 feet back. I'm just that trailing fly. here welcome back to our youtube channel absolutely perfect day here in the sierra foothills the sun is out it's nice and warm totally awesome and i have a question today from one of our viewers one of my customers about spring trout fishing this comes from a guy named aaron rogers um not the quarterback apparently but he does live up in the north valley and i think aaron rogers the quarterback's from like chico or something so i just thought that was interesting but the aaron reached out to me and he asked me you know what are your your key presentations for spring trout when you're out at a lake whether you know it's shasta you know or a big impoundment like shasta or a smaller lake stuff like that what are your key presentations so what i did i grabbed my tackle bag same tackle bag i've been taking out on guide trips and i'm going to talk about my four key presentations for spring fishing let's start off with spoons um Spoons are a fantastic trolling bait for trout. They cover a, a broad spectrum of sizes. They cover a broad spectrum of speeds. And uh, let's talk a little bit about speed and size while we talk about spoons. So right here, um, this box, this is kind of my fast trolling box. This is where I keep my, my speed spoons, um, stuff like that. Now, I know most of the guys out there have a full selection of speedy, uh, speedy shiners. A lot of guys have my speed spoons. A lot of guys have Rapalas, okay? All of those baits, those are your fast trolling baits. And if you've watched the channel for long, you know my method. My method is to start out, if I'm going to a lake where I don't have any intel, I'm going to start out large and fast. And then I'm going to gradually slow down and downsize my spoons as I have to until I start catching fish consistently. Spoons are a great seeking bait. They're a great bait to break out on the lake when you don't really know what's going on, when you're trying to dial in your presentation. You might not end the day trolling spoons. You might come up with something that's more effective, but spoons are a great bait to go out and kind of assess what's going on. So I've got a box of, of speed spoons, my fast stuff. Um, I have a box of my medium speed stuff right here. These are my uh, these are my trigger spoons. So that first box, that that speed trolling box, 2.7 to 3 plus miles an hour, up beyond 3.5 usually. This is my medium speed stuff. This stuff, you know, kicks in at about 2.2 all the way up to 2.7. And this is primarily, you know, trigger spoons, disco minnows, stuff like that. Medium sized spoon medium speed let me show you a few of these um you know if you're not familiar with my trigger spoons there's just a good basic all-around trout spoon they're the right size they're about two and a quarter inches long they troll well at moderate speeds thin profile trout like them so this is my my medium speed box but the box i really want to talk about and i think this is a box that a lot of guys neglect um, whether you're fishing in the in the spring or any other season 
I want to talk about spoons that you can use slowly, okay? That's an overlooked part of spoon trolling these days. Everybody knows about speedy shiners. Everybody's out there going three miles an hour and more. It's a great technique when it's working, but it doesn't work every single day. Sometimes you need to slow down. Sometimes you need to slow down and have a mixed spread. Maybe you've got out a threaded worm and a soft plastic and you want to put a spoon in that spread too. Well, you need some spoons that are smaller, spoons that will run at that lower speed range. For me, that's anywhere from about 1.7, 1.6 maybe, all the way up to 2.2. And let me show you some of these spoons. Um, if you've got some needlefish, you have an outstanding slow trolling spoon. They work well at slow to moderate speeds. Um, my all time favorite slow trolling spoon is the Trigger Spoon Junior. And as you can see, I have quite the selection of Trigger Spoon Juniors. Um, it's just proven to be one of the most effective baits that we have in our store. They catch fish at a variety of different lakes, um, big fish, small fish. My fish on. Woo! Wow, 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 wow. That fish is going crazy. <laughs> Trigger Spoon Junior, Trigger Spoon Junior. Man, that's a, that's a strong fish. Look at that. Look at that hog. That, that's, that's something. That's, that's really something. That's a Lake Berryessa rainbow. Look at that fish. That is an incredible rainbow right there. What a beauty. Fish. My big trout from Lake Berryessa this year, over five pounds, got that fish on a Trigger Spoon Junior. The other spoon that I really, really like pulling, let me find one here. Probably got a whole bunch of them, I do. Right here. And I've got two or three of these little, little foam dealios covered with them. That is my pinhead spoon. Now, this could easily be cast masters and needlefish it could be thomas buoyance it could be something like that it could be the old school rainbow runners the bottom line is this you need speeds that range from large to small and you need speed uh, spoons that can be worked from fast to slow because sometimes you're going to be out in the water you need to go slow the pinhead, great example is very compact profile. You control these fast too, but this thing is gonna start working at about 1.5 miles an hour. It's a small, it's not intimidating. Um, it's something that will draw strikes from trout that are kind of neutral. They're not really chasing, but they're not opposed to chasing. You show them something that stays in the strike zone and uh, they will reach out and they will grab it. If you're not storing this, uh, your spoons this way, something to think about guys this is actually part of a uh, rubber knee pad but you can use pieces of uh, pool pool uh, pool noodle you know floaties stuff like that just cut it into strips put your spoons in there and when you want a spoon you're like okay i want that one with the the red tape gold spoon they're not all tangled up they're not all messed up um, a lot of areas of my life are a mess my truck's always a mess but my tackle box isn't a mess because when I'm out on the water and I've got something in my mind that I think is going to work, I want to be able to grab it and say, okay, there, there it is. There's the red tape gold one. I knew I had that and it's not all tangled up with the other spoons. So just something to think about there. But uh, spoons, probably, I'm not going to say my number one most effective bait, but it's absolutely one of my number one most important baits to have in my tackle box during the spring. Okay, what's my, my second most important bait? It is a trolling fly of some sort. Let me close this box up. There we go. Now here are my trolling flies. Most of the ones that I am actively using at this time, I have, um, I have them rigged on leaders. This is kind of my master box. This is where I go when I want to rig up a new fly or a new color. As you can see, you know, I have some standard trolling flies in here, but this box is absolutely plugged with metal heads, metal heads, metal heads, metal heads. There's a pink metal head right there. So, this is an orange, orange metal head. Nope, you're still in for ice cream, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you're still in for ice cream, but look at that. That's a nice fish. That's a beaut. He's a beaut. 
Um, I have some extra hooks that I can put stinger hooks on these if I need to. Um, if I'm getting short strikes, I don't usually start with a stinger, but if I'm getting short strikes, I'm going to run a stinger. Um, again, guys that watch this channel a lot, they know that trolling flies are really my Rapala. They are my number one lure all season long for catching trophy sized trout. They're extremely versatile. They come in all sizes, they come in all shapes, they come in all colors, and you can troll flies at virtually any speed. That's the reason I almost always have at least one fly in the water. Now, the fly may or may not be the most effective bait to use on any given day, but I can tell you probably about 80% of the time, a trolling fly is going to catch me the biggest fish I catch in any given day. Um, top fish on a trolling fly so far, 13 pounds my top wild rainbow on a trolling fly over seven pounds a multiple tens more fish than i can remember above eight pounds caught on trolling flies and many of those fish were caught on the metalhead trolling fly um kind of enough said if you're not pulling flies you've heard me say this before you're not catching as many trout as you could be and you're not catching as many trophy trout as you could be if you're not pulling trolling flies Get some trolling flies, figure it out. Always pair them with the action disc. Mostly, I fish them naked. Um, once in a while, I will pair them with flashers. Most of the time, I'm pulling my trolling flies naked. Any depth, doesn't matter. July, Shasta, the trout are 100 feet deep. They'll work 100 feet deep. Right now, springtime, trout in the top 10. They work in the top 10. Extreme versatility also something the fish don't see on a daily basis. Show the fish something novel, show the fish something they haven't seen a lot of in the past, and you have a much higher possibility of hooking those trout, and that is triple, quadruple true when it comes to hooking those big trophy trout. Those fish have seen Rapalas, they've seen Speedy Shiners, they've seen them every day and all day at our busy, you know, our busy more pressured lakes. They're not seeing trolling flies as often. Therefore, you're gonna catch a lot of trophy fish on trolling flies. Keep them wet, it will happen, guys. Third bait is going to be underneath all these other baits. Let me get, these are the spoon boxes. Let me get rid of these guys. Soft plastics, okay? This is kind of my master soft plastic box. I've said it before. I'll say it again, soft plastics are the new frontier of trout trolling. That was the same thing we got our uh, big fish on yesterday, guys, at, at Orange uh, Trigger Minnow, right under the surface, man. What a fight, we fought that fish for he, he was on that fish for several minutes, guys. He was just a monster. They have action unlike any other bait. They have a soft feel. They come in a myriad of different colors. Um, you team these with the action disc in the case of my my trigger minnows. Here's a trigger minnow right here or the uh, Trout tricks worm right there team those with the action disc. The action is unbelievable now with grubs Sometimes I team them with the action disc. Sometimes I don't okay 90 plus percent of the time I'm running these guys naked without flashers or a dodger. If I do decide to run an attractor, I will be running a turbo flasher with these. Um, they just match up well with the turbo flasher. I'm finding that you control your soft plastics at virtually any speed. My target speed is typically 1.8 to 2.2, usually at that lower end of the speed spectrum, usually when fish are a little more, a little more neutral, that's when I'm breaking out the soft plastics. If they nip at them, they get a little taste of them. It's soft, it feels real. It encourages them to keep on biting. They pair very, very well with scents. Put some scent on it. Makes the bait even more attractive to the fish. But the three you know, soft plastics that I'm running are your traditional three inch grubs or FHS grubs. They're winners in bait fish colors as well as your, your darker colors. Your purple, um, just one of that great iconic black bass color purple and blue flake it's a winner on trout too okay so i'm running traditional grubs i'm running um the trigger minnows which we're actually going to start calling tricks minnows just to take some of the confusion away so the tricks minnows i'm running those in a variety of colors 
typically i'm running the light colored stuff that's a darker colored model there typically i'm running your your whites white stuff like that um your natural colors like this um typically i'm running your more bait fish colors but there are times when the super bright stuff the bright orange and the the super bright pink is going to pay off for you but typically it's the lighter colors now trout tricks worms trout tricks worms number one color bubble gum guys you've seen it here on the channel a ton of times bubble gum bubble gum bubble gum bottom line is if you're not pulling kind of the same talk i give about flies if you're not pulling soft plastics get some experiment with them and you're going to find out that you know once in a while you're going to catch a very large fish on a soft plastic but what they're going to do better than just about anything else is they are going to put numbers of fish in the net um, there is just something quite irresistible about the action of soft plastics. They have that liquid, lifelike movement. They have that lifelike feel. Pair them with some Procure of your choice. Um, I love sweet corn in the spring. It's a nice, sweet scent. I also like anise. But pair them with some scent. Get some scent on there. And you are going to encounter a lot of trout in the spring. You know, because we're, we're transitioning. We're still getting storm fronts. We're getting big fluctuations in water temperature. We're getting periods of wind, stuff like that. You're going to find a lot of trout that are kind of in a neutral mood. They're not really in a mood to chase. But on the other hand, you know, they're, they're willing to bite, especially something that has a lot of movement, a lot of action that stays in the strike zone. And uh, that is where the soft plastics really, really shine. Um, they've gone from being a bait that I was experimenting with to being a bait that is absolutely instrumental to my, my arsenal on a daily basis all season long. But especially in those times when the trout may be neutral, when the weather might not be optimum, when the conditions might not be optimum. When that water temperature is fluctuating, it can easily put the fish off the bite. It can make them finicky. It can make them hard to catch. And uh, that is a great time to be pulling the soft plastics. Uh, my favorite soft plastic is definitely the Trout Tricks Worm, followed by the Tricks Minnow, followed by the Grub. The grub will get just as many bites as the worm and the minnow. The problem with the grub, if there is a problem with grubs, it's that they have that long wiggly tail. Let me bust one out here. So your grub, here's a motor oil colored grub. They have that long tail. And when you pull it through the water, it's going to stretch out. Half the body length of that grub is tail. I can only get the hook back to the end of the body. And that means if the fish are in a neutral mood, you are definitely going to deal with some short strikes. Now, a lot of the time, if you just don't touch that grub rod, if you just let it keep on swimming, they'll keep nipping at the tail, you know, if you've got a good scent on there, until they get the hook. But the thing I really like about the minnows and the, um, the worms is that I can get that bend of the hook back into the rear third of the bait. So when they come nipping, a lot of times they're getting hooked. And a lot of times when they're nipping, that hook is going to loop right around the lower jaw. You are not going to lose those fish. They are pinned. They are on there tight. You can still release them, but during the fight with it looped around that lower jaw, they are simply not going to be able to shake that hook, which is a good thing. Nobody likes losing fish. So enough said about the soft plastics. If you're not pulling them, give them a try, guys, because they will change the way that you think about trout baits. They'll change the way that you think about trolling for trout. They are just a devastating bait, and uh, you're going to see them refined and perfected even more. I'm looking at new shapes. I'm looking at new approaches. I am not done experimenting with these. Uh, you know, and on the contrary, I have just scratched the surface when it comes to soft plastics, and they are the new frontier of trout trolling. Let's end talking about dirty, dirty, dirty night crawlers or gulp and blades, attractors, things like that. Let me grab my box of Dodgers. Now, this box is going to surprise a lot of guys. First of all, it's gonna surprise a lot of guys that I troll lures naked, you know, a good percentage of the time. I do, I'll get questions. You guys will see me catch a fish on video and they'll ask a question no dodger but they're not asking it like you weren't using a dodger they're they're asking it like no dodger oh my god hold the front page we this is a headline he caught a trout and he wasn't using a dodger that's right guys the thing is with trout 
they are so tuned into their environment you can be pulling a wee dick night and they know it's there doesn't mean they're going to hit it doesn't even mean they're going to approach it but they know it's there they're aware of it now when it comes to dodgers for me these are the dodgers i've got in the boat right now you notice anything i don't know how well you can see that you notice anything that's missing there i do not have a single six inch dodger in this entire box and this is my guide box this is a box i reach to when i absolutely have to catch fish largest dodger i have in here right now is a four inch fisheye right there that's at the at the high end of the spectrum that's the big stuff my number one dodger day in day out when either pairing it with a worm or one of the the gulp products i'm really digging the gulp products because you know worms you got to keep them cool you got to take care of them gulp throw it in your tackle box be sure to zip the little bag shit because they will dry up they're made of soybeans that's it there's no special care for gulp just keep the envelope closed and you're good to go pair that gulp or a night crawler with a slow death hook thread that on there that's going to make it rotate through the water very important if your worm or your gulp isn't rotating it's just not as effective so you want it to rotate and then pair it with a small dodger uh, my number one presentation is a mini willow leaf paired with a worm or with gulp i'm also playing around a lot with our um, diamondbacks right there again a three inch blade guys very compact this blade has a very subtle action rather than having that big traditional dodger kick this has more of a twisting action um very effective very new to the fish and my final offering that i'm using a lot of and i got some here that i just added special tape to because it's cool are the um sidewinder dodgers this has a traditional dodger action but again it's barely over three inches it's very compact the small dodgers what the intended use for them is is just to put out enough flash and enough vibration for the fish to come within range if i can get them within range if they see that worm if they see that gulp the worm and the gulp will close the deal on their own think of these dodgers as my business card i'm just tossing it out into the ozone it's just enough to get those trout to call me up and say hey once i get them on the phone the worm closes the deal okay so very subtle the other thing i'm running i i am a long time um flasher troller flashers big strings of flashers they just flat out work but uh, i love low drag low profile um flashers and this is my turbo flasher i've actually got this one we're playing with this guys i've got this one rigged up i've got it crimped on mono um i've integrated a rudder we are going to start offering these in the store but not yet the bottom line is i like to run my turbo flashers because it's got very let me get it to spin here see that see that spin in action it's got very little drag it puts out a ton of visual stimulation it puts out a ton of vibration again it's very effective at bringing the fish within range and then they see the offering and the offering closes the deal i pair these with threaded worms but in recent days i have been using these paired with my soft plastics and uh, with devastating results. I'm gonna say half the fish I caught. My last three days up at Collins Lake, um, we had more than 60 fish to the boat and more than half of them came on the turbo flasher rig. I was running some orange turbos like that, some orange and chartreuse turbos, as well as the rainbow colored turbo. So bottom line is, if you're going out this spring, you're looking for trout, you need some dodgers, you need some flashers, but don't blow them out of the water. You don't need big six, eight inch dodgers. You don't need a dodger on every single rod. You need a more stealthy approach a lot of the time. Remember, once again, early spring, it's transition time. The fish may not be in a real aggressive mode. You go trolling through those fish with a six inch do dodger, it may actually hurt your ability to catch fish because it's just too much. Happens with kokanee fishing all the time. Sometimes I'm using that mini willow leaf and the turbo and I'm killing the kokanee while guys around me running more traditional sized dodgers are not doing well at all. It's because their dodgers are too big. It's actually scaring the fish. So a lot of the times, you know, you want a more stealthy approach. You still want the benefits of using a dodger, but a six inch dodger is too much. 
a four inch dodger might be too much. A big string of, you know, traditional cowbell type flashers may be too much. I like to go stealthy with dodgers. I like to start out with the smallest dodger I can and then gradually upsize until I start hitting fish. Same is true with flashers. I'm gonna start off with a single turbo flasher, take the temperature of the fish, see if they're responsive to it, and then start making modifications accordingly. My final bit of advice is about making modifications, okay? If you go out to a lake and you catch the first fish of the day on a threaded worm with a mini willow leaf dodger and the bite's not going as well as, as you think it should be, the next lure of choice should not be a number 18 Rapala trolled at five miles an hour, okay? Sometimes that is the answer to the problem, but it's better from a strategic standpoint to make small incremental changes. If you're running a Dodger and a, a mini willow leaf and you catch one fish, but you think you should be doing better, you're marking more fish, there's more fish around, try a three inch blade. Um, try a soft plastic, try something subtle. If you're using the Trix minnows and you catch a few fish on orange, but your sonar unit's telling you that there's more fish around or one of those fish, you know, barfed up some pond smell, try a subtle change, switch to a natural color. If you make small incremental changes in speed, depth, color, and profile, you're gonna be able to really dial a bite in. Here's how you set a pattern up. I tell this to my guys almost every day on my instructional trips. You get out on the lake, you should be running three or four different offerings if you don't know what the fish are biting, okay? One fish on one bait tells you almost nothing, okay? That could just be random chance. Two fish on the same bait in a reasonable amount of time, that gets a second identical bait in the water. A third fish on that offering gets a third bait in the water. The fourth rod is always for experimenting. If I'm catching fish on, on orange, you know, uh, tricks worms, well, I'm gonna try maybe a pink worm on the other rod and see if that's better. That one may, may tell me, okay, you need a second and a third pink worm out there. That's how you build a pattern. And your ability to build a pattern, you know, figuring out the depth, the speed, the lure, and the color that the fish will hit consistently, that allows you to stack up fish really, really fast. I'm running four guys a lot of times this year. I need 20 trout for limits, guys. That means I need to build a pattern. I need to hammer on the fish as early as I can, just because 20 trout is a lot of trout. Four trout an hour is a lot of trout every hour. That would take me five hours to limit the boat. So always think in terms of eliminating unproductive water, unproductive baits, and always seek to build a pattern consisting of depth, speed, bait, and color. And that is how you're going to achieve those big numbers, those big days, days when you go out and catch 20, 30, 40 trout a day. That's how it's done, guys. I'm Kel Kellogg. I'm out of here for now. I hope that answered your question, Aaron. I think it did. Um, I will catch you next time right here on YouTube. If you're looking for any of that gear or you'd like to correspond with us, fhsfishing.com. Check out my store. We've got everything from lead core rods, soft plastics, trolling flies, and more. Thanks for all the support. I'm Kel Kellogg. You have a great day.